Do you have what it takes to be a content creator? Guys, uh, I think it's behind me. Whoa. I'm sure for a lot of you, the answer is a most definite yes. It's really easy to fantasize about being the next big creator. Hello guys, welcome to my let's play. You want to be the Mr. Beast of Spooktube? You want to be the Markiplier of Silly Reactions? No, Jack, no! You want to be the Logan Paul of Recording Dead Bodies? Wait, Content Warning asks you the big questions. Can you beat the algorithm and make it to the top? Bro, we went, we went viral, dude. <laughs> what is that? What, what? Do you have the stuff, the gusto, the schmutz? Are you willing to sacrifice your pride, your patience, your very principles, all for the sake of going viral? Ah, get away from him, get away! How about your life? The Green Goblin! Oh God! Oh no! Most would be crushed. It's spinning! It's spinning! It's spinning! They can't take the weight of expectations in reality. Get me out! Get out of me! Get in! Go, 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 go! But you? It's a fucking bugbear! Oh! I think you got what it takes. Wake the flip up, Sigma. We got VPNs to sell. There seems to be this April Fool's trend that people like to do, where they make quality products, things that are actually good. And Content Warning is no exception. It was made by Landfall, the same studio that brought Tabs, Stick Fight. It came out on April 1st and it was free for the first 24 hours. And over 6 million people downloaded it. If I can describe this game in one word, it would be fun. In more words, it's silly. There are chills and thrills. There are frights and delights. It's everything you want from a game that's less than a McDonald's McRib meal. Oh, what is that? What is that? You and your friends are trapped inside of an influencer's hype house and you're forced to work a grueling 30 minutes a day or else you're evicted. You make content and start building up a fan base. Their views get you ad revenue. And with those Raid Shadow Legend ads, you guys can buy more equipment to make your funny prank videos in the post-apocalyptic world of Oakland, California. At a glance, it's kind of obvious this game borrows heavily from games that? like Phasmophobia, but it's a lot more close to Lethal Company. Would you call this a lethal like? All these games feature a group of four traversing dark, dilapidated buildings, a lack of meaningful combat, whoa, whoa, whoa. monsters, ah, oh my God. <laughs> a home base, an extraction system, a shop with expendable gear, funny dances. These are all good games and all, but let's be real. You don't really play it for the gameplay or anything. You play it for that sweet, sweet, sweet content, content you crave. Guys, look at doggy. Oh! These games are popular because of the clips of you and your buddies chimping out. That's it. That's it. I'm stunning it. Ah! Or instead of playing the game, you can watch your favorite content creators scream into the microphone. Yeah! This generates a bottomless well of entertainment. You don't have to be a marketing whiz to realize that funny screams get views. The whole game's design philosophy is to get rid of the middleman. Why put gameplay into the game to get these funny clips when you can just get the funny clips as the gameplay? We all know you don't play for this. Fuck. But really, you play for this. What's this? Oh, crap. Oh, <laughs> Are you lying? Content warning kind of solves this dilemma in a meta contextual way. The clips are the objective rather than the byproduct. I feel like it's safe to say that there's a whole genre of video games these days that are made to generate user content. Hell, me making this video proves the intention of the developers. So with all this out of the way, let's actually take a look at some of the gameplay. So when you first boot up the game and start it up, you notice that you're only given one task, to film something scary. You can also tell at a glance that this game is dark as fuck. You're gonna spend a majority of the time looking for creepy stuff in the dark. The place is riddled with British thugs, fentanyl addicts, the locals, freaks, geeks, goons. With an objective so broad and simple, it was kind of easy to just start twiddling our thumbs, not really knowing what to do. We only really pressed record when something happened and just went with the flow. Uh, it's right behind me, isn't it? I won't lie, when we first got back, we weren't really feeling the game. It wasn't until we popped in our first video that we started watching and we realized... Uh, it's right behind me, isn't it? 
it's right behind me. Isn't it? It's pretty fun. It really reminds me of when you film clips with your friends and start sharing it online. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. I liked it. This game kind of feels like a power fantasy to me. When I was growing up, there really wasn't a way to show my friends gameplay that I recorded. Everything was just kind of told onto the playground and you just had to believe me. Nowadays, you have so many ways to share your gameplay. PlayStation was the first to integrate a designated share button onto their controller. Nvidia has its instant replay system built into the GPUs. Hell, even Discord has a clipping system. And this game does an amazing job integrating that accessibility to its players. At the end of every video, you can actually save your clip as a webm onto your desktop. Wait, save video oh, to desktop? Wait, you can save the video to the desktop? Well, I, you can actually save them as a webm. Wait, that's kind of sick. This is great for sharing with your friends, posting it online. My only issue with webms is that it's kind of weird to edit. I use Adobe Premiere, and sometimes when I load in a webm, it makes my entire computer chug. I'll look into it later, but I'm pretty sure it's not supposed to crash my PC. One thing I want to talk about is how the game scores you. There are in-game commenters that take note and react to your video. This kind of gives player feedback of what the game is looking for and how to make more entertaining videos. If there's a part in the video that gets a ton of comments, a ton of engagement, that's a good indicator that you should keep doing that. If there's a part in your video that gets absolutely no comments, that's a good indication that it's boring and that you should probably change it up. I feel like this is very similar to real life in a way. Feedback is important to grow as an artist. And I think this game has a really creative way of showing that aspect of content creation. All right, so after the circle jerk, you guys go to bed and you start again the next day. Our first couple of videos were rough. Oh, oh, what is that? But over time, as we practiced, we started to develop a workflow going. <laughs> we found little tricks that people really seem to enjoy. For example, there's a big spiral staircase that leads down to the first level. We noticed that every time we jumped, there would always be a comment that really seemed to enjoy that. You can find these little bones throughout the map, and we made sure to comment on them. Guys, what I found? I got a bone to pick with you. And for fun, we tried to employ more traditional film techniques. Stand right here. This, right? Okay, turn around. Okay, wait, okay, stand, stand right here in the line. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna start zoomed in, and then I'm gonna zoom out. Put the boom mic more high. Okay, perfect. And Kyle, you start, no, 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 don't get in front of the camera. Hey, Danny, Vincent. This, uh, I got a little, little bird told me. As we got better, it started being easier to get the clips that we wanted. But the thing is that we were still being pretty genuine with our reactions. What is that? What is that? What is that? We started to record the monsters as they appeared. We were kind of at their mercy. But then it hit me. There is this annoying little thing that held us back. Something that prevented us from reaching our true potential. Our self-preservation and our self-respect. We had to cast aside our humanity and sell out. Instead of letting things happen to us, we had to make them happen. Before long, instead of being a ragtag group of friends that are just doing live leak urban exploration, we became a full on production company. Any semblance of authenticity quickly vanished under the illusion of the video. What the fuck is what that? Is that? Whoa. Oh my god! What? Oh, John. Our best shots came from meticulous planning. We started developing plots. We started getting different camera angles. We decided what roles we played. Someone was in charge of being in front of the camera. Someone would be the director. Someone would be the gaffer, which is the guy who controls the lights. Well, that, well, that, you, that works as a light. That works as a light. I think things got real good when we started using the soundboard. We started spamming the shit out of it, which was funny the first one to five times. But when it worked, it worked really well. Hey guys, we're here in front of Oakland, California. One of my favorite parts is doing on-spot okay. editing. Okay, what's your idea? Jump now. Three, two, one. Oh my God, we're just indie filmmakers. This video was not supposed to be a review by any means. This game is a lot of fun to make content for. But with that being said, this game is pretty shallow. After the first couple of attempts, you kind of get what the game is. In a day and age of viral marketing, this game is specifically made to be viral. It's made to farm clips on YouTube shorts or TikTok in order for people to generate hype. And there's nothing wrong with that. 
Whether intentional or not, I think this game is better as a filmmaking simulator rather than a horror game. You don't treat the monsters like threats, you treat them like items. In game, you run into the same problems as a real life set. You have bad takes. Are you recording? Yeah. Oh my god, say action or something. You have equipment not working the way you think they should. You get attacked by monsters randomly. Whoa, whoa, what is that? What is that? Running around making content felt familiar. At first, what I thought was going to be just like a silly game ended up being a sobering reminder of who I used to be. Now, pause, pause, pause. Okay. The rest of this video is going to get a little bit more personal. If you wanted like a funny review or something, my final score for content warning is three Chinese guys in a live leak video out of five. If you made it this far, I just want to give you the biggest thanks. This is going to be my first video on this channel, and I really don't know what I'm doing. If you guys want to like and subscribe, that would mean the world to me. I don't even know what I'm going to name this channel as of right now. I'm in the middle of the edit, and it's probably going to be something I figure out as I'm uploading this. I'm going to talk about why. I wanted to make this video in the first place. So this isn't my first attempt at YouTube. It was about eight years ago, right after high school. I had this burning desire to just make stuff. As soon as I got my hands on my first laptop, I almost fried it pirating Adobe Premiere. You're probably wondering what this has to do with the game. Well, the thing is that when I first made YouTube videos, I kind of treated it like how I first started playing this game. At first, I just wanted to make my friends laugh. Some of the friends that I'm playing this game with right now are the same friends that I used to make videos with. But something happened. The time we spent making content for ourselves slowly turned into frustration. We didn't get the views that I wanted, nor did we have any real trajectory, even though I thought our stuff was good enough. So I just stopped. I stopped having fun, I stopped getting excited about future projects, and I stopped creating. I felt like my time and effort was almost getting robbed, but really I was only really robbing myself with the opportunity to grow. The channel died with less than 100 subscribers, and I'm pretty sure that's a common fate for most people. The thing is that I never really forgot the feeling of having a watch party at my friend's place, and this game really reminded me of those times. I think Landfall really does have a hidden gem on their hands. It's funny how I consider this a hidden gem even though there's like millions of people that have it, but they really hit the mark with how it feels to be an independent creator. The watching area is a couch and a couple chairs off to the side. If you look over at the dining room table, it looks like there's a couple chairs missing. I think little things like this is 100% intentional. It's almost as if the viewing area wasn't meant to accommodate this many people watching the TV all at once. It's little things like these that really get me. When I look back on our old videos, I can see that they weren't good. I can shamelessly admit that. Maybe it was pride or delusion, but I just like couldn't handle criticism at the time. I insisted that every single one of our videos had like a personalized border. I thought it was like a genius for that. I thought it was like 500 IQ. Earlier I was talking about how you don't play games like Phasmophobia or Lethal Company for the objective, and in this game, it's pretty similar. I don't play this game for the imaginary views or the imaginary comments, I play it because it's just fun to make shit with your friends. It's for each other, it's for the jank in all its glory. <laughs> When you fail to reach the quota, you get these messages that talk about how you decide to give up, but it always ends the same way. You realize that it was just a bad dream. Even if you fail, you don't lose anything. You don't die. You don't lose your house. It's just a part of the past. Art is about expression and not the results. The only consequence is what you do next. You can close the game and move on, or you get back up. You walk out the door and you try again. Will this game be popular a month from now? Two months? A year? Probably not. Games are ultimately just products to be enjoyed for a set amount of time and moved on from. And in a way, so are videos and movies. But just like old photos sitting in your phone, or gaming clips from your hard drive, the memories you had at the time are special to the you that you were at the time. When I look back on my old videos, it makes me cringe. But I remember something else. I remember all the memories of me in my parents' garage learning how to edit videos. My friends and I sitting on my couch just watching what we made grossly overestimating how good we were. I remember installing malware because I googled free video editing software and just trusted the first link I saw. And that's refreshing. We may not be the same people we were before, but it's never too late to be the person that you want to be. I know I'm 100% overthinking and overfeeling this game. It genuinely inspired me to start making videos again. I don't want this to be a one and done deal. 
And I think that just covers it. Uh, I don't really know how to end a video. So here is my cat, Ferris. Thank you guys. I love every single one of you and good night.